welcome to El Molar in Spain for the 2015 FIM Junior Motocross World Championship. We will have three champions this weekend. One from the 65cc European Open Class, the 85cc World Championship and the fastest bikes from the 125cc World Championship plus the highly converted Nations Championship with the best performing national teams. There's so much racing to pack into one weekend with hundreds of riders hoping to write their piece of motocross history. And this circuit on the edge of Imola is well up for the challenge. It's a long uphill start straight here at El Malar, nice and wide as well. The riders cresting the top of the hill through the Fox hole shot line and the first turn starts to drop away on the exit into a short straight, breaking hard for turn two. See the nature of the ground, hard and slick, a few loose rocks there as well. Onto the first plateau over a single jump, then a tabletop and then a short little step up. The ground falling steeply away on the opposite side through a downhill sweeping left hand up and then down one of the first steep descents. That step down at the top of the hill, taking us through the right hand up and then the first tabletop through here starts the riders working their way through the valley to make their way to the highest point of the racetrack. With this step up here onto the plateau, they then swing left through the turn here and then jump off the edge of the earth down the steep infield section all the way to the bottom, a single jump at the bottom, into the right hander. Get on the gas nice and early, second, third, fourth gear. Hit the huge step up section, again taking us to the summit of the hillside circuit here at El Malar. Then through the left hander before dropping back downhill again into the valley. Through the right hander, back on the gas. This time though, it's a short uphill climb. Then we peel away to the left, over the corner jump, continuing to turn left, over a short drop off, down into turn 12. And then we exit there and start to climb our way back up towards the finish line, jumping into the wave section, heading uphill all the time, on the side of the valley, through the right, short straight into the left hander. See the conditions here, over this tabletop jump, dropping away on the landing and then just a couple of corners away from the finish line the riders head right uphill slightly over the final jump through the final turn past the finish line a single jump takes the riders back onto the start straight one rider who always draws a crowd is Liam Everts, who runs the familiar number 72 of his father Stefan and the whole Everts dynasty are big fans of the high level of racing at the junior world championship I think it's something nice for the kids and the families to uh, to have this kind of race and uh, to see also uh, for uh, you know uh, the teams and to see what the future is bringing from from the the young kids which are coming up. So it's a, it's an interesting race to see. It's always always a good atmosphere here. When you see all countries together, it's like uh, yeah, like a small motocross invasion. So it's very nice for them and also for the kids. Uh for me, a lot of fun to have my father around. Uh, we get along really well, and uh, you know, it's nice that he's also enjoying his grandchild uh, to see him race. He slowly gets more and more excited. When uh, Stefan was a young kid, I was running around and, and this and that, and now I see Stefan do the same because he's, he's so nervous, and the mama's so nervous, and uh, myself, I'm not so nervous. I, I think it's also a little bit too early because now that I'm young, he's, he's, he's good thinking what he's doing, and uh, that's the most important. But it uh, will be one day that they're coming together with three, four riders in a high speed because now in this moment it's not so high and then I think it will be different. When your own son is riding you, you get a little bit
little bit more easy, excited uh, than when when you are uh, cheering for for let's say an, an, another kid which is not your son. He don't say it's like you need to be third, you need to be on the podium. He's just like do your best and have and have fun. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah, have fun. That's the most part that I try to do. Best of luck. Let's see how Liam gets on in the first 65cc race. race got underway then on board with Pablo Gutierrez into turn one as Raul Sanchez gets the fox hole shot ahead of Cosmacus. Right this charge downhill into turn two back on board with Gutierrez see the heavily watering going down on the track to combat the hot conditions but it was Cosmacus. 4-2-3, leading the race from Florian Mirio and Adam Kovac. Riders charging around this circuit. 4-23 though, Karsmakers it was who was leading the way in race one. Mark Hunier, 3-22, and Radek Petrovsky came together in the fight for sixth place. As Karsmakers led the race, it was Mio who made a mistake and lost second to Kovac. Gutierrez in fifth place and closing in on Mio for fourth, but he just couldn't find a way through. Matt V. Vopolov, 757, in third, ahead of Gutierrez, and Mio in fourth. But the last lap, it was Karsmakers who won the race from Kovac. Vopolov was third in race one. Mio and Gutierrez in top five. For race two, the hot conditions, meaning more water on the circuit. Heading uphill, once more you can see how the riders spread out. It was Karsmakers who got the fox hole shot ahead of Kovac. Karsmakers led the race from Kovac and Redick Petrovsky on the 5-2-5. Top three, though, were pretty close together, followed by Mio on the 247. Petrovsky, though, 525, in second position, was challenging Karsmakers for the lead. Karsmakers, though, maintained his lead over Petrovsky and Kovac with Mio on the 247 in fourth. Adrian Monville. Past Mio for fourth place, and just a bit further back, Martin Bahoda, 437 in sixth. On the last lap, though, and Kars Makas eventually came home to take the win. Second place went to Petrovsky, and Kovac was third. And there are your results Kars Makas, Petrovsky, and Kovac in race two. Podium time then for the 65cc Open Class Riders and third overall Radek Petrovsky who was sixth in the European Championship, Adam Kovac second overall but your overall winner Kay Karsmakers who was second 
in the European Championship, but Eddie Heard presenting him with his FIM Junior gold plate to signify that the rider from the Netherlands. Confirmation then of the top three, Karsmakers, Kovac and Vitrovsky. Kai Karsmakers, congratulations. You're the 65 Open European Champion. Two wins in both motos as well. Perfect weekend for you. Yeah, it was a good weekend for me. Uh, the, um, the first week was good. I have a whole shot and I am uh, first on, uh, on uh, the finish. And the second race, I'm no, I am not in the first week, not a whole shot. And the second race, I have a whole shot. And I win the race. It's good for me. It's a good weekend. We have a whole host of Australian riders at this year's race. And one of the main hopefuls is Reese Bird in the 85 class. What are your thoughts of being here at the FIM Junior Motocross World Championship? I'm really excited. Um, it's a great event for me and just trying to get used to this heat and get ready for racing. Now there's always an Australian on the podium. Does that put any pressure on you to perform at this event? No, it doesn't. I, I know I definitely can get on that podium. I work really hard for this position and um, yeah, I know I can do it. And of course, the FIM Junior Motocross World Championship is going to be hosted by Australia in 2018. That must be something to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. I'm um, really looking forward to it, knowing the track and how the soil is. Uh, already used to the heat and the weather and stuff. So uh, what are you hoping to achieve this weekend? Definitely going for that win, but I'd also be really happy with that podium. My name is Kakeru Gamoda. I'm racing the 85 class for Team Japan. It is an honor to be here representing my country and I'm looking forward to showing everyone my speed. cc race one and on board with Petrosin as Raffaella Giusio almost crashed at turn one but Ben Clark on the 101 did crash into the whole shot camera looking down into turn two and back on board with Petrosin down in 19th place but it was Banistop number 77 who led from Moreau 225 and Ravo Dankers 401 with Kale Dormel just behind them on the number 20 machine. Baniston was having a good race as he continued to lead on the number 77 from Moreau. Dankers though, 401, found his way past Moreau and into second and found himself catching Baniston and then eventually into the lead. Baniston and Bastien Bodam also trying to find their way past the 77. Bodam, 403, got himself into second ahead of Baniston and Rennie Hoffer and Moreau and Ralph Muison. Rennie Hoffer, number 11 though, in third ahead of Moreau, one of the favourites. Last lap, and Dankus was on his way to taking the chequered flag. On the 401 machine, the rider from the Netherlands took victory from Bodam and Hoffer. There's confirmation. Dankus, Bodam, Hoffer, your top three. Moreau was fourth in race one.
start of race two. And as the riders charged uphill, it was Brian van der Klee on the 520 that got the fox hole shot from Rafael Giusio, 220. Circuit now starting to get nice and rough. Fitness starting to come into play amongst these 85cc riders. Van der Klee, 520, led from Petr Polak, but had to defend hard. As Dankus on the 401 in third place ahead of Canture. Peter Polak on the 323, found his way past Van der Klee for the lead. And Dankus passing Van der Klee for second. Moreau also got through as well. Polak led from Dankus and Moreau. Polak riding a great race on the 313. Looked like he was running away with it for a while as well. But eventually, Moreau on the 225 found himself leading after posting two very fast laps ahead of Polak. A little bit further back, right in the 472, was Rick Elzinger in fifth place. But on the final lap, Brian Moreau was on a charge, being pushed by Polak all the way to the chequered flag. With Dankus down in third, Moreau was victorious in the race from Polak and Dankus. There is your confirmation. So Dan was fourth, Elzinger coming home in fifth. So your podium then for the 85cc Junior World Championship. Bastian Bodam, who was second in the European Championship one week prior, third overall here at the FIM Junior Worlds. Brian Moreau has to be content with second, but Ravo Dankus, the winner of the Europeans, and now the FIM Junior World Champion in the 85cc category. Information the top three. Dankers, Moreau and Bodan. Rivo Dankers, congratulations. You're the 85cc world champion. Brilliant weekend for you. Plus, you also went one in Latvia last weekend, so it's been a good two weeks. Yeah, it were uh, amazing uh, two weeks. Uh, train hard for it. Uh, yeah, we bring it so far to get two world and European champion. Yeah, I'm really happy about it and yeah, I want to thank all my team, my sponsors, my parents and yeah, thanks. Congratulations, Rivo. Thank you. So how important is it for you to be at this event? Yeah, this event is very important for me because I like to uh, change every track every year. This is five years make world champion me and then I'm very happy. I like to stay with my group Team Italy and then it's just so nice. I hope uh, I feel good race because uh, I go inside for fun and then uh, not go inside for win and make top five because I don't like go inside like this. I go uh, inside like fun and Claudio say relax, yeah, fun. You make a top ten for me is so nice and me uh, say okay. Good luck, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So what's your ultimate goal for this weekend at the Junior World Championship? Um, I think the most important thing is to make a good start and just keep going, um, you know, my own rhythm and try to fight till the last lap. I really feel confident over here and hope the crowd's going good and yeah, good races over here and keep the track cool and yeah, we'll see how it's everything. For me it's really difficult to ride like in so hot conditions but I will try to do my best and yeah I know we, in front of this Spanish uh, fans it's yeah it gives you more power. <laughs> Let's see how Jorge gets on on 125cc race one. Five CC race one and heading up the start straight on board with Filippo Zonta as Charles Van Eden, number 10, grabbed the fox hole shot from Eric Engeland on the 111. But it 
wasn't long though before the European Championship leader Maxime Renault was leading the rest of the field on the 959. Camille Yamaha Van Eden was second, Ruben Fernandez Garcia, the Spaniard, was third, Prado, another Spaniard and favourite to lift the title, fourth. But he also made a mistake and almost crashed. Rubini got tapped there by Conrad Muse, but they both stayed up. But it was Renault who continued to lead from Garcia and Josiah Natsuki from New Zealand. Hunter Lawrence, 46, was down in fifth place, but having a good ride. Renault, though, on the charge from Garcia and Muse. The Brit gaining speed and positions. Matisse Bosram found his way past Prado to get himself into seven. And Conrad Muse found his way past Garcia on the number 44 machine to get into second. He then went after Renault in the battle for the win in race one in one of the most thrilling races of the weekend the two absolutely side by side wheel to wheel and bar to bar but it was Renault who held on for the win from Muse and Garcia was third Rubini was fourth and Lawrence was fifth Start of race two and Filippo Zonta getting caught in the gate. Then heading uphill with Jorge Prado as Muse, 44, gets the whole shot from Renault. But Richard Zakina cuts into the inside to take the lead before turn two on that 102 machine. Conrad Muse just there to the side of Prado. The two KTM Factory Junior riders duking it out in the early stages. Muse though, hanging on in second position, but it wasn't long before he was back in front. Renault got himself in the second. Sakina was hanging on in third. Prado though, getting passed by Kislagi. And charging downhill, Kislagi still holding the inside. The Italian, number three. Conrad Muse and Maxim Renault were providing the fireworks and the entertainment just like they did in race one. Renault finding his way past the Brit to take the lead. Conrad Muse responding though on his KTM. Hunter Lawrence found a way past Wasram to get into fourth place, but Muse was not letting the Frenchman out of his sights. Zakina having a great ride in third place. So too, Hunter Lawrence. Kislagi also well placed, but all eyes on this battle for the lead between the 959 Renault and Conrad Muse. Muse knew that he had to find a way through to take the win and be crowned junior world champion. They were side by side, heading down the hill. And in the closing laps, he thought he'd found a way through. But it wasn't enough, and the flag went out, and it was another win for Maxim Renault. Conrad Muse had to set them for second. The Frenchman is crowned world champion. Renault, Muse, and Sakina, the top three. Lawrence and Bozran, the top five in race two. A good crowd gathered around the podium then, and your top three in the one, two, five. Hunter Lawrence of Australia, second overall for Conrad Muse, but your overall winner, Maxime Renault from the Kimia Yamaha. Leading the European Championship in 2015 at the moment, but uh, three overall victories to his name so far. But leaving Spain with the gold plate and the FIM Junior World title. Maxi score as well. No, your overall winner, you second, Lawrence third, Toto fourth. Maxime Renault, congratulations. You are the 125cc world champion, but you had to work hard for it. That second race, how hard was it to defend that lead against Conrad Muse? Yeah, it was uh, very hard with a uh, hard track with many bumps and many lines. So Conrad takes the lead and then uh, I must push to, to come on her, on him. And uh, then 
it was big fight and I take uh, the the lead uh, at uh, I think uh, 15 minutes 15 minutes so I'm so happy to win today it was so very difficult with the 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 time it was so hot and I'm very happy in the nation's classification France topped the bill with three points Great Britain second on nine Australia third on 11 so France world champions in the nation's category as well. I hope you've enjoyed all the racing here from Spain. These kids have really put on a fantastic show and we'll move on from here to do big things in the world of motocross. Team France also won the overall nation's title, which they will take with them to the 2016 event, which will be held in Russia on the track of Olyanok next summer. We'll see you then.